Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Professor Botox Media. Welcome to my Wii U seminar. I am joined by my colleague, Caleb Dog Bravo. Uh, he's an understudy. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about Wii U collecting, just do a full, like, casual discussion about the uh, hobby, as well as, you know, the prices of everything, and just why collecting now is a good idea. This is just a fun, casual discussion. I've done a couple more, not really edited, but, like, you know, singular videos, shorter videos talking about it. This is just going to be a free-form discussion, talking about everything there is regarding Wii U collecting. I already, you'll already have seen it. There's a video with me and Ty played that on 3DS, so we figured we should do a Wii U counterpart. Caleb. How are you yes. feeling in the in the wake of this madness of uh, Wii U and 3DS prices going up? Specifically, Wii U in this video, but how yeah. You so you mentioned now is a good time to get into collecting. Uh, actually, that would have been two years ago. Okay. Would have been a good time. Okay. Here's the thing: <laughs> I always get comments like this on my videos, and it always kind of pisses me off. People are like, dude, no, this the, now is a terrible time to get in. The time was, you know, back in like 2016, 2017. Well, you can't go back now. In time, first you can't. Of all. You, first of all, you can't go back in time. <laughs> Second of all. Typically speaking, unless video games have a huge crash, which I don't really foresee happening in the foreseeable future, it obviously could happen. Now is always the right time. <laughs> yeah, they may, Fire Emblem Fate Special Edition on 3DS might be the highest it's ever been. Now is the right time to buy that game there's, because it's only going to get higher. <laughs> there's a few exceptions, like for example, um, but th this usually happens early on. Like we use past this point, but early on when the Wii U, like right, right when the Switch is coming out, Hello Kitty Cruisers used to be like $300 at one point. It's now 60. Right. So, and there are some Wii U games that we're going to get into that could still get ported in the future, which will lower their price. And I guess I'll just go ahead and say it. Twilight Princess HD and Wind Waker HD, mm -hmm. mostly mostly Twilight Princess. If that game gets ported, it will go down in price a lot um on Wii U. But for the yeah. most part, people see the Wii U as the collector's console. I think people are realizing like, wait, this is the easiest console to go for a full set for. This is the easiest console currently to collect for. I mean, granted, there are certain games that are very expensive. For the most part, it is still very cheap to collect for, with a few exceptions. There's, well, first of all, there isn't a game on the console that costs more than $1,000, and there's only 200 games total. So that definitely helps. Uh, right. Compared to some, like, some consoles. I'm less familiar with other consoles, especially non Nintendo consoles, but. Even just on the Switch, I f and P even like PS4, stuff like Poop Slinger, <laughs> there's there's yeah. just these random games, especially, especially with like Vita and and Switch, especially Limited Run Limited has Run completely stuff. ruined yeah. it. There's no ch feasible chance for any regular non-multi-millionaire, literally multi you'd have to be a millionaire, basically, at this point, to go for a full Switch election, basically, which is it's ridiculous. Impossible. It's impossible. Um, Within, like, the first six months, there was already more Switch games than there were Wii U games. Like, it's not right. even close. Which is, which is great, but just as a collector's console, it's not really not really my style. That's why I don't really like collecting for it as much. I have, I'm looking at my collection. I'm going for all the first-party games. That's where I'm yeah. stopping. Same with 3DS, to be fair. 3DS has less games, but... It's still a little overwhelming. With the Wii U, what's the exact total for North American? It's like what one? It's like one sixty something. Yeah, one sixty six, I think. And then for total, it's like two hundred five or something like that. It, well, f as far as unique games go, there's like one ninety eight total unique. Damn. Um, because there's like multiple versions push. of Dragon Quest and. Yeah. Right. So I mean, all the yeah, there's different versions, of course. Like you were just showing me, you got the gold edition of Just Dance twenty sixteen. Spine right. is the same, disc is the same, the cover art is different. If you're collecting variants, that does count. Or like I always joke about the DuckTales variant, which came with literally just a pin. And that version's like eight yeah. times more expensive than the regular version for no reason, which is just stupid. Um, and then you have like all the Disney Infinity, different bundles and Skylanders. There's like a Crayola Skylander Swap Force bundle yeah. that just never pops up. I don't know what's going there, on. There's that. like, for Darksiders 2, there's like a Mexican exclusive slipcover variant. I don't know. I've never seen but... a Wii slipcover. Now that I think about it, that's interesting. <laughs> Not yeah. like a traditional one. Anyway. It's really weird. But yeah, of course, uh, we didn't really get into this. The re the thing that sparked all of this was the eShop closure. Um, and it's funny. So that was about a month ago now. Uh, well, when they announced it, the eShop is still live and active. You can go on there and buy digital games. If you don't care, if you're not here for collecting purposes, and if you're just here to hear about Wii U stuff, think of this as a, a suggestion for what games to buy digitally also, because we're going to get into most of the Wii U's best games here. Um, but yeah, the eShop is closing uh, next, is it March? March 2023? Uh, yeah, at the end Not, of March. And I, okay, here's the thing. I say eShop closure. Everybody's saying that. It's not closing. You're just not going to be able to buy games anymore. So it is essentially dead after this. You'll still be able to read out yeah. games. Um, it's basically the same thing that happened with the Wii. 
Right. The Wii Shop channel was still up for a while, and then you couldn't buy games, and then eventually it closed after that. So the Wii Wii Shop will be closing probably in 2024, I would guess, um, fully, yeah. which is sad, because that, music, then, uh, that music's going to go bye-bye. <laughs> uh, so, but uh, within like the next couple months, they're going to take away the ability to add funds directly with the credit card. But if you have a Switch, then uh, you can still add your funds onto that if you have your account synced up and just use the funds from that. So Right, so... Problem. There's still time to buy digital games, although obviously me and you are physical collectors. There are, I guess we can just talk about it real quick. There are a couple digital games that are worth buying. I still need to get, um, well, everybody watching this has probably hacked their Wii U, so it doesn't really matter. But of course, <laughs> yeah. I still I still want to legally own Pokemon Rumble U, and uh, I think I actually have Pokemon yeah. World. I think I think Pokemon Rumble U is the only one I'm missing of like the first party Nintendo. Of course, there's Pokemon World. There's there's Doctor Luigi. Are there Dr. any other major Luigi, ones? Yeah. Um, games. Amiibo, uh, not not festival. The Animal Crossing Plaza app. <laughs> Amiibo um, tap. Yeah, Ami Amiibo tap, the classic. Um, there there is a few of them, I think. Uh, not much. Not as much as 3ds. 3ds is losing much more digital only stuff than the Wii. U. Of course, I mean the main thing for Wii U virtual is the for eShop stuff is virtual console. Virtual console is pretty good on Wii U, even though people gave it so much shit during its its time. Like, it has a pretty good, like, the amount, like, DS games, GPA games, SNES, N64, they do pretty even good Wii with games. them. You know, even Wii games. Yeah, even Wii games, which is another thing I haven't really talked about. Wii games are also going to go up in price from this. A lot of them are already expensive, but, like, I think it's stuff like Rhythm Heaven Fever, that game's, like, that's, like, a $100 game right now, and it is on the Wii U eShop, so that's going to probably go up more. Pandora's Metro Tower. Metroid Prime Trilogy. Metroid Prime Trilogy is an obvious one. Pandora's Tower, one Metroid of the Pri Operation Rain Rainfall games, so there are Wii Metroid games Prime that were Trilogy. Too. Metroid Prime Trilogy was always expensive, but this just made it even more expensive um it's it like was it's still available for 20 dollars on the eShop, but yeah oh. wait it's, it's kind of crazy um also sin and punishment i'm sure is going to go up that's on the wii uh wii u eShop. yeah stuff Blade. like xenoblade should be okay because it's on everything at this point yeah but uh i don't know i think last story is on there so that would be one a lot of niche stuff i think it was also like even like there's even some like Interesting things they did with like some virtual console games. I think it was the NES uh, light gun games, like Duck Hunt and Hogan's Alley. Yeah, the, Wild Gunman. Those, ones, actually, those are you like basically unique games. Yeah, those ones were interesting because uh, they didn't add those. They, they were not on the Wii Shop channel, and they added them to the Wii U. Um, and obviously, those games were light gun games, so it's not really possible to use on a modern TV. But they basically made it so you can use the Wii remote instead. Right. So. Yeah. With that said, enough of these digital games. We are not here to talk about digital games. We are here to talk about hardcore collectibles, Caleb. My investments. Yeah. How are my investments doing? Uh, we're going to talk about, we're going to go through a couple steps here. First off, we want to talk about the obvious stuff. Basically, that yeah. means the first party Nintendo stuff. A lot of first party Nintendo Wii U games are actually very cheap right now. In fact, I would say every game that's on Switch currently is like l less than $20. You have like Pikmin 3. Yeah. Um, Mario 3D World, oh, even Donkey stuff Kong. like Don yeah, Donkey Kong, um, Mario Maker. I would say, obviously, these aren't technically ported to Switch, but they're still cheap because of the version on Switch. Being Mario Maker, which I don't think will go up at all, uh, to be honest, at least not anytime soon. Not Splatoon, much, which no. might because of its single-player campaign. And then the one that I think of like the main ones that are still super cheap for the Wii U that I could see potentially going up in the future is Smash Bros. Because it's Smash Bros. It is a unique version of Smash Bros., I think people are yeah. going to want that eventually. And while we're here... We really want to play Smash Tour. Yes, yeah, yeah, Smash Tour. Last console Smash game with a ton of trophies because yes. they got rid of those. And then also, there was DLC for it. So if you want to have all the Smash Bros. DLC for Wii U, uh, this is your last chance to buy it. So because that was There is one more thing game. that needs to be taken into account because this, this, this was mentioned a while ago, like a year ago. Um, Super Mario Maker... Obviously, like a year ago, they cut off the ability to upload levels, right? Yeah. You can still download levels. And there is basically an entire Mario game of levels that Nintendo made that aren't built into the game. You have to download them. Oh, so if I you don't download them, I mean, they're, they're not, they're, they are technically made by Nintendo. It's like the uh, the Mii costume levels. Or not oh, the Mii costume. those yeah. ones. The little challenge. The every every week they had a new level, right? Yeah. They're... There's a bunch of them. I already downloaded all of them on a console. Um, I don't know if there will be any way to download them after this. Maybe you have to the download closest, someone else's save file. I was going to say the closest but... thing would be 
like in Mario Maker 2. Well, no, because they have the Amiibo costumes. I was going to say, like, people could recreate them in Mario Maker 2, but that's not going to be the exact same thing, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. But the eShop closure, it's not going to affect that, not but... <laughs> that's coming. <yet. laughs> the online the, servers will be shut it, down within two years, I think. Yes. Probably. The online is going to be shut down inevitably. So, if you want to play that Mario game, then you have to download those levels. <laughs> yeah. Um, other obvious, obvious ones. I mean, what else? like Tokyo Mirage sessions. Uh, then we get into some more of the expensive ones. The ones that are, okay, I guess this, this is almost a separate category. The Wii U games that are not on switch. There are a yes. couple that are, there's a I handful that matter. There's a handful <laughs> that matter. And we're already seeing them go up in price a lot. I mean, as me and Caleb, I mean, I, I don't know how long you've been following the channel. Me and Caleb have been saying no. this for like a year. The Wii U, the tr true Wii U exclusives are all going to go up in price. I even yeah. go to the extent that I think stuff like Amiibo Festival will go up in price eventually. It already kind of is. The bundle is like twenty dollars right now. At a yeah. point, you get it for five. It's it's more than it used to be. Um, I think Amiibo. I mean, games that already have equivalents or ports or whatever are kind of safe. Splatoon is going to be safe for a while. Even Amiibo Festival, I think, will stay for a while because most of the modes in that were added to New Leaf, right? Except for like True. the main mode. True. But the, um, the main mode, which was the worst part of the game. Yeah. <laughs> um. And, like, Smash Bros. is probably going to be fine for a while. Obviously, games that have ports, like New Super Mario Bros. U, Pikmin 3. Um, but games that have never been ported and have no equivalent on any co other console, you're going to want to get these. They are going up in price. Um, the most obvious one is probably Xenoblade X. Which, so. let's just say this now, out of every Wii U game that's left, is probably the most likely to get ported. Yes, I do think this will be ported to Switch eventually, especially if Nintendo is still adamant that the Switch has like five more years left. Yes, so. because that's the thing right now. We've kind of seen like a dry spell of Wii U ports. When was the last time we got one? Was it Tokyo Mirage uh, Sessions? I think that was it. That was, was, like, that was over two years ago now. So yeah. it's been a while. I don't think they're done. Um, the ones that I see as, as like true candidates are uh, Xenoblade X, I think is that's a lock not next year maybe the year after that like a last year switch game probably i think that's a lock the other yeah, there's, a, there's a couple of them that i think could get ported there's some that i think definitely won't be ported so i think i think you and i disagree on one of them so yes the, the next the next <laughs> likely candidate after xenoblade x in my opinion and i i don't really care about this game is star fox zero i know it's a meme i think this game will get ported at some point um i don't especially I don't, if they're adamant about the five more years thing Awesome. Yeah, I don't think it's going to get ported. I would love for it to be ported so they can add normal controls to it. Because I personally, I like the game, but the controls are annoying to if I if you want to get back into playing it. Yeah. If I had normal controls, I'd love to play it again. Yeah. And we should say but Star Fox Zero right now with the two-pack with Guard. Guard will never get ported, obviously. Oh, it's no, like, no. What, 20, Guard by itself bucks. will never be ported. Yeah, like, it's like, it, it's like it, will be, it, it will be included with Zero if that gets ported, but it's not going to be by itself. Yeah, no. You won't be able to get that. So, ironically, Guard might end up being more rare than, than Star Fox Zero, potentially. Um, yeah. Then there are a couple others. Uh, these are the ones I think me, you and I had a disagree on, and that is Paper Mario Color Splash and Yoshi's Woolly World. So, these games already have equivalent sequels on Switch. In Woolly yeah. World's case, that was ported to 3DS. Mm -hmm. If Nintendo wants to make more money, I don't see why they wouldn't just port these. Yoshi's Woolly World is pretty cheap right now. It's like $25 to $30. Color Splash is pushing yep. past 60 and that is a true Wii U exclusive that never got ported anywhere else. I, I always find it <laughs> hilarious whenever people mention Color Splash because if you remember when it came out, people gave it a lot of crap um, for being Sticker Star 2, uh, which, fine, whatever. Most people didn't play the game evidently because the game sold less than 100,000 copies. Yes, sold very poorly. <laughs> yes. And that that's across all regions by the way. It was the last Wii U exclusive. Um the only other game first party that came out after that was Breath of the Wild. Another game that I think could go up in value only because of Zelda Collectors, not because it's a Wii U game. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, Color Splash, I don't Here's the thing with Color Splash. People the general consensus online is that it's not good, even though they're wrong. Mm -hmm. Whatever. And I think I don't know if Nintendo, like, knows, like, I don't know if Nintendo can see through that as, like, oh, they just didn't play it, but, like, with Wooly World, if Nintendo wants some easy things to port, like, if they're running out of titles, I'm thinking, like, with the 3DS, when the 3DS was dying, they were porting, like, you know, Luigi's Mansion, an extra epic yarn, the Mario and Luigi games. If, let's say the Switch 2 is out and they still want to release some stuff for the Switch 1, as we're calling it now, um, maybe stuff like that could come. 
not before Xenoblade X or Star Fox or or really just those two because there's not much else. <laughs> but yeah. like, yeah, there's like five Wii U exclusives at this point that maybe potentially could get ported. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's worth mentioning those two, especially Color Splash because, like I said, true exclusive. Uh, Yoshi's Woolly World, funny enough, the 3DS version is more expensive, the port. Um, I still need to get that. That was a late 3DS game. Especially the Amiibo bundle for that game. Oh, yeah, with Poochie. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, there are a couple more Wii U exclusives I want to get into. The one that has skyrocketed specifically in the past week, by the time you're seeing this, I'll have already done a video talking about it and playing it on UQuest, was Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. So, I bought this game. I, I had it when it came out, obviously, and I sold it at some point. I bought it like three weeks ago for $30. That was the going rate for this game. It's pushing 80 now. I, yeah. I think, I don't know if it's because like As Kirby. more than double the price. Yes, I don't know if it's because of like Kirby, Forgotten Land coming out, or maybe it'll mix of both with this and the Wii U eShop closure. I don't know. But Kirby and the Rainbow Curse is a game that I was expecting to come to 3DS. I thought this was a prime port for 3DS. Um, Especially since it's a sequel to Canvas Curse, which was on the DS. Really, it should have never come out on Wii U to begin with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it should have just been a 3DS game. And maybe Planet Robobot should have been on, on Wii U. Whatever. Um, so yeah, Rainbow Curse, low odds of ever getting ported. They could do it. They could do it where you're moving the Joy-Con and painting. I don't think they will. So I think Rainbow Curse is probably forever locked to the Wii U. And I think right now, one of the most expensive Kirby games is Kirby Air Ride. That's up like 80 to 100. Rainbow Curse is prime to be the most expensive Kirby game. So yeah. if you're a Kirby fan, I would say most likely probably get that now. I'm glad I got in when it was a little bit cheaper, but it could even keep going, so we'll see. Any thoughts on Rainbow Curse, Caleb? Uh, I haven't played it. It is a so good game. I, it is I one of my favorite, personal favorite Kirby it. spinoffs. Yeah, because um, you like the spinoffs more, typically, right? They are simply better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, there, but yeah, and, that is definitely a game to look out for. Yeah, now there are, I want to say, two, maybe three more Wii U, like first-party Nintendo games that are going to go up in price, and there's there's zero chance they will ever get ported. Um, actually, four. So, the first one is Wii Sports Club. Kind yeah, of getting not. a port. <laughs> kind Technically, it's, it's with like this sequel. one. Yeah, sequel. So, that one, I don't know if it'll really go up much more. Um, and then, oh, also the Mario and Sonic games. Uh, Rio 2016 is already pushing like 70, 80. Um, but we don't really need to talk about that that much. Yeah. Uh, that, that, those games, without, like, it goes without saying that, that they're not going to be ported ever. Right. Because Mario and Sonic 2014, games, Sochi Olympics. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, going to be ported. Yeah. They, they, those were released because of an event that happened that year. That event happened that year. <laughs> right. So it's never, yeah, so, that's never getting ported. Now, there's... The only way that would be ported is if they did some sort of collection, but I doubt that we did that. No, so. they're never going to do it. Now, there are three more, uh, and these are all very Wii U-centric games. So, and, and when I say that, I mean they use the gamepad. Nintendo Land. Right now, this game is worth nothing. <laughs> I don't think it that's what basically would be. every Wii U. Yeah, so it is probably one of the. I don't know. If, I don't know what the exact sales data is for this game. It's probably one of the better selling Wii U games simply because of that. Like how Wii Sports was one of the. It was the best. Pretty sure it's in the game. top ten. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Know. It, it almost has to be. Um, this one probably won't go up for a while, but being a true Wii U exclusive, simply will probably never get ported. I don't. I, I think we could see a Nintendo Land two or something similar to this concept yeah. again, but it will not be the same game. So that's one to look out uh, for. It's a cheap game. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people online are like, port Nintendo Land. It's like, how would that even work? Yeah. A new <laughs> game set in Nintendo Land? Absolutely. Sign me up. I love yeah. Nintendo Land. That's one of my favorite Wii U games. Um, and then the other game that is already... This one's also skyrocketed. I'm not sure if you've been paying attention to it. Uh, game & Wario, Caleb. So, oh, yeah. it was already expensive. <laughs> it was already like 80 to 100 before this. I got in like right then. I was like, okay, I spent. I think I spent 90 on it. It's like 150 to 200 now. It's gone up a lot more. <laughs> so Game of Wario is essentially just a WarioWare game, but worse. But worse. It's not a very good game. I'm just going to be completely honest. It's not a very good game. Uh, but if you're a Wario fan, uh, this this is obviously never getting ported. The entire point is, is that it uses the gamepad game. Or yeah, it uses the gamepad. Um, yeah. And then the final one, the final rounding out these Wii U party or Wii, Wii party type games, ironically, Wii Party U. Obviously, never getting ported. Uh, and that one's like 60 right now, 50 to 60. Dude, that game kind of annoys me. And we were talking about this the other day. Um, so, the the game itself is, you know, whatever. It's kind of expensive now. Um, but on the front of the box, it has like this picture of a, of a stand that the gamepad is sitting on. And on the back of the box, it says, stand included in inside the case. It isn't. Yeah, you see that stand there? I'm pulling up to the camera. 
And then on the back, it says stand included. Uh, I found one listing for the stand on eBay from a Japanese seller for like $40 just for the stand. So I don't know what the hell happened there. <laughs> I don't hey, know if it, I, I don't, I, it feels like a conspiracy. Like, I don't know if it ever came with it. Honestly, I don't think it did. Maybe uh, I know at one point Nintendo mobile? sold it on their website, but uh, I don't know if someone could explain the circumstances of this stand's existence, please, in the comments, because did it just come in the first print of the game or did it come in the big box version only? Yeah, because or... there was the big box with the Wii mode, obviously. Should say. And and why on the back of every copy does it say that it includes the stand? <laughs> it is very funny. Uh, Caleb, you just forget to remove that. Caleb, before we move on to more niche games, is there any other first party Nintendo games I forgot? I mean, there's stuff like more cheaper stuff like Cat and Toad and um, Mar Mario Kart. We didn't even mention, but that's obviously not really gonna yeah, be affected no, much by this. That's the best selling Wii U game and the best selling Switch game. So right yeah, now, the <laughs> now the Switch version is gonna re retain its value. <laughs> I don't yes. think the Wii version Wii U version is. Is there anything? Oh, the there is two two games. I guess we kind of already covered them, is the Zelda games. So, do you think Twilight Princess will be ported? I think they'll both be ported. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I, I am kind of, like, thinking, like, man, when is this going to happen? I, I have been saying this for, like, three years now, and it just hasn't happened, there, so. There is one more game as well I want to okay. talk about, but Zelda, I think those are going to happen inevitably. I think they're going to be released separately. So, Wind Waker right now isn't that expensive. It's, like, 40. Um, yeah, it, for the one that has like the gold cover which i think is the best um that one's the most expensive Dude, obviously. the one without the gold cover looks so bad <laughs> yeah, no. it looks so cheap yeah um but yeah get the gold cover one <laughs> and then i guess uh, while we're twilight, talking princess. About twilight princess yeah. there is the amiibo bundle i have that i'm glad i bought it i i have the game by itself and then uh i think you sent the link to me maybe or i don't know we were talking like a year or two ago and someone had with the wolf link amiibo and like the box just that without the game for like 40 bucks and i was like it's a decent deal now that bundle goes for over 200 so i'm glad i went ahead and picked that up if you're a variant collector yeah um, i got i got the game at launch and i still have the bundle so i i i also did that and then i sold it when i was younger so. yeah but then i had to rebuy um, it. Um, what was that other there game? there is one more there is one more first party game we fit you that we should mention no Devil's third. <laughs> obviously, there's it's not a, it, it published on Nintendo, but it's not a first party game. Um, obviously, there's there's all the other published Nintendo published games or whatever, but there is one more Wii U exclusive that is worth nothing right now. It is Mario vs. Donkey Kong. Ooh, this game. I have it somewhere. I'll pull it out, but I don't know where it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's a Japan exclusive Mario game on the Wii U. It's gonna go up. <laughs> yeah so i mean we should say this it was it is on the eShop. this is a mario vs donkey yes. kong game it's mario vs donkey kong tipping stars it's on the wii u and 3ds eShops right now you can buy it right now digitally the jet yeah. they're they also released it physically in europe no uh is that a code technically. in the box um it they released like a case i have a case they, they released a, a case and you open it up there's nothing it's just a code okay it's, it's one of those. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't remember if it was one of those or not they did the same thing with the 3ds version as well okay good um, to know but the Japanese version for Wii U and 3DS does exist. Yeah. So, there you go. Now, I was going to kind of put this in a separate category, but since we're on the topic of first-party Nintendo games, we might as well go ahead and cover. Uh, there's a couple of weirder ones, uh, specifically in Europe. Uh, we have Art Academy Atelier, I believe is the name. Uh, this is a yeah. Art Academy game published by Nintendo exclusively in Europe and Japan, physically. North America, never, uh, North America never got it. And then two very expensive ones. Art Academy is like 30 bucks. I just ordered that. Uh, but two very expensive games uh, published by Nintendo that I do want to cover. Uh, first of which is Fatal Frame. Of course, in Europe, it's called Project Zero. Uh, they only release this as a special edition, like big box version in Europe. It goes for like 250 to 300 and simply doesn't really pop up that much. Um so, Caleb, you have this. I still need to get this. This is one of the I remaining Nintendo it. published games I still need to get. And then after I get all the Nintendo published games, I'm excited because I'm going to do a whole video just about every single Nintendo published game. But I want to I want to be thorough. So I need to get yeah. this. Um, there is um, one more thing we should mention about Wii U games. Obviously, most people are going to buy them online because that's just how it goes. Um, for the most part, all Wii U games are pretty easy to find online. There's only a few that rarely pop up. So, for the most part... We'll get into one of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that one and get to the import section. But yeah, Fatal Frame, if you know Fatal Frame, you know it's a, it's a little spooky little horror game with a little Japanese schoolgirl. Um, take pictures of ghosts or whatever. I, I've never played them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that is one of the most expensive uh, 
uh, Nintendo published Wii U games. And the other one, not an import, but I guess we can go and talk about it because it is Nintendo published, is of course Devil's Third. This is the most expensive Wii U yes. game that exists. Um, it pushes. It's it's a bit of a range. I've seen sealed copies over a thousand. I've seen pre-owned copies for like seven hundred. Typically, it's right now it's pretty volatile. Right now it's actively changing. Uh, right. So, I mean, it could even flatten out lower than what it's at right now. So, maybe kind of wait and see. I got a really good deal on my copy. Uh, if you missed my pickups video from like last week or two weeks ago, go check that out. So, I'm pretty happy. You got the old price it. for it. I got the old <laughs> price <laughs> somehow in, in during this volatile time. So, um, yeah, Devil's Third, obviously. Caleb, you want to tell the story of this game? Because I think it's pretty interesting. So, the thing. So, obviously, Devil's Third, I think, was originally. I don't remember what it was originally supposed to be developed for, but at some point. Um, the game was dying and Nintendo picked it up to be a Wii U exclusive. Um, the multiplayer version did eventually release, I think, on Steam. It did. Um, and it is now shut down. Also. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> um, but this game apparently is bad. Uh, but it was very rare. And when it first came out, there was a really big... There was a lot of confusion because allegedly this was only released at GameStop in America... And there were only 300 copies. <laughs> so, uh, here's the asking. Here's the asking for it at that point. Uh, I'm yeah. pretty sure there was obviously a reprint or that was a, a fake there number. There definitely was a reprint. Because I remember, I remember when this game came out, everybody was like, oh my god, it's so expensive. It was $80 at the time. And we were like, why would you spend $80 on Devil's Third? And then, like, that next, like the next summer, I think summer 2015, or no, it came out in 2015, summer 2016, you could buy it for, like, 50 bucks. Um, so there definitely was a reprint at some point, um, but that was probably it. So I would assume there's probably yeah. less than, what do you think, like 1,500, maybe 2,000 copies of this game? There's less copies than Babylon's Fall. Oh, <laughs> that's a, yeah, go watch that. Go watch my Babylon's Fall video from a week or two ago. Plug. Yeah, <laughs> plug, plug the video. I'll put the card up in here if I remember. Um, so yeah, Devil Sir, that is the cream of the crop. That is the Wii U Grail. There is one game that rivals it in price, which we will get to. Uh, and I guess we're going to niche games now, so let's just go and get into that kind of yeah. topsy turvy this thing. Book of Unwritten Tales two, Caleb. This game, <laughs> this is just some random ass shovelware. And I, I, every time I talk about it, I have to tell the story. I used to own this game. I, I used to, because in 2016, uh, before I had a job, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be a Wii U collector. And I found this game on clearance at Walmart, Caleb. I found it on clearance at Walmart, and then I sold Bad it. Day. To GameStop, probably for like fifteen dollars. I don't remember. You probably sold less than it that. to me. <laughs> I should have sold it to myself. Uh, but yeah, Book of Unwritten Tales too. <laughs> Another game that really doesn't. I've actually surprisingly I've seen it pop up pretty pretty regularly. Like I would say like once every couple of days it pops up for you know. Not a good five, price, but you know pop. five six <laughs> in that range <laughs> five six hundred. Um, did this? I forget. Did this release in Europe? It did. Do you there have, is a PAL version of the game. How much is that? Cheaper. Is that the one you have? I don't have that one. Oh, I, don't, okay. I don't have the game. Um, but it is cheaper than the American version. Same thing to me said for Double Star, by the way. Everything we're talking about, unless we say otherwise, we're talking about a North American version. We should. I should have said yes, that earlier. For the most part. Yeah. So. But yeah, Book yeah. of Vermin Tales, just some random shovelware that's just super expensive. Um, and uh, keeping with that theme of random ass shovelware, uh, of course I did do a top 10 Wii U rarest expensive games video. Go check that out also. Um, but I guess I'm, we're going to be overlapping here a little bit. Uh, turbo is one dreamworks turbo. The, I'm, I'm talking about that snail. That's, that's what you're thinking. Yeah, you are thinking correctly. Uh, this one goes for like 150 to 200. Another shovelware that like, I don't really get it. I guess they just didn't print many copies. I don't, do you know when this game came out? No idea. Whenever the movie came out, I guess. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know when I, I, don't, I don't know when that movie came out. Uh, but yeah, Turbo. Sometime, what... sometime between 2012 and 2016. <laughs> I would assume probably like 2013 or 2014. Probably 2014. Probably. Uh, what are some other weird shovelware ones? Cabela's Big Game Hunts, Game Big Game Hunter. Yeah, that one's that like a hundred. Um, um, there's also um, Hunter's Trophy 2 Europa. That one, as far as I'm aware, is exclusive to Europe. It is pretty expensive, especially for the the gun bundle. So. How much is that one? Like two hundred plus? I, I, it's like over two hundred dollars for the bundle. Yeah. Um, there are three versions of the bundle to watch out for. Um, one of them has a white shotgun. One of them has, I think, a black shotgun, and the third one has like a realistic looking shotgun. So it's like wood and why? Um, <laughs> why have they done this, color. dude? It's always this shit with like for collectors. It's like, man, why are you doing this to me? Yeah. 
feel bad for I, I just got the white one because that was the, the cheapest, cheapest one. one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, for me, for my collecting, I mostly just care about having one of each case and with the game in there, obviously. Maybe once I'm done with my collection, I think I'm at like one, 150 right now, total games or something like that, 140 maybe. Um, something like that. I'm in that range. Maybe once I finish, I'll be more open to doing variants, but right now I do not care <laughs> at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, any other weird random shovelware that I'm forgetting, Caleb? Um, there are, obviously speaking of variants, there are a lot of variants of Skylanders games. There's like yes, the Dark the Edition. Dark editions of Superchargers, um, and they did they did yeah. them for all of them, didn't they? Swap, or at least Swap Force. Uh, and Trap I'm not game. sure. There's the Dark Edition. There's like the Crayola coloring book yeah, I edition. Yeah, I mentioned that one earlier. Which has like a white, a white box that you can color in the characters, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think it comes with some crayons. And uh, then, <laughs> here, exclusive Caleb, you go get the item I'm about to bring up. Of course, in Japan, they released a Skylanders game that we never got. It's Caleb's rolling away to get it. Uh, there's barely any pictures of this thing online. I always got to show it off. Adam sent me a picture for another video. So in Japan, Activision released Skylanders Spires Adventure exclusively on the Wii U in Japan. This was a Toys R Us exclusive. This thing does not pop up online. I think Scott the Waz mentioned it in his one of his videos. I, I think it was his Toys of Life video. Um, like Caleb, recall. no one can hear you, so let me just keep talking. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, so currently you can go on eBay and find copies of this game just buy it with the case and disc Caleb like Caleb went on Yahoo auctions I don't know how long ago like a year or two ago well, it and... wasn't Yahoo auctions I can explain the story later but okay you'll more, yeah. you're more often finding on Yahoo auctions right Caleb basically found this thing and it's like a grail it just does not pop up I have been looking ever since he told me that he got it I have been looking for this game because I, I want to get it I actually kind of want to play it because this is potentially the definitive version of Skylander Spyro's Adventure as he shows it off in the camera there uh, with the starter pack. I'm pretty sure it's the same characters that come with any Spyro's Adventure starter pack, but this thing is, I would say, probably the rarest singular Wii U game variant just because it literally doesn't pop up. Um, it's the hardest to find, I would say. Or right. at least how, one of the How much did you pay if, you're not, if you don't mind me asking? So um, I found this one day because I was, I was looking. I'm like, man... What the hell? Because one time um, uh, I saw a video online and this guy, he's like, hey, guess what? This game exists. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm just like, man. I want to. So I was looking it up online. Obviously, no copies on eBay. And by the way, searching Skylanders on eBay sucks. It's just terrible. It's horrible. Every time you look for like a game or the bundle, you're just going to get like 800 figures before you actually find the game. Anyway, besides that. Um, by the way, this is what the box looks like. I'm trying to show you, like, everything about it. Yeah. Um, but after, like, a month of searching online, trying to find this thing, um, I did find, like, a stock image of it, by the way. Um, but I did see one copy on Amazon Japan. Just one. Just the one. Um, I'm like, yeah, let me buy this. It does not ship to America. Yeah. Uh, so I went on this website, I forgot what it was called, but it's some proxy buying service. Um, you put in the, the Amazon link and they'll buy it for you and then they send it to your house in America or wherever country, right? So I did that. Um, I think this was like $80 for uh, just just this um, on Amazon. And then uh, the buying service was like $20 to ship to my house. Oh, that's not bad at uh, all. And, and to be fair, I did, I did, I think I did expedited shipping. Uh, but anyway... So, yeah, That's it really costs like 100 something dollars. And interesting that it was on Amazon Japan because, as I said earlier, this was exclusive to Toys R Us, correct? I believe as, so. As far as we know. <laughs> as far, there, there, it was exclusive to some place. At first, um, uh, the place I originally heard about this game, uh, the guy said that it was like exclusive to some convention or event or something. I'm Imagine. pretty sure that's not true. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not true. Uh, this would be way more uncommon if that were the case. It's pretty uh, uncommon, so was, to be fair. And I did see there was a commercial online on YouTube um, for this version and the PS3 version. A uh, Japanese commercial. Interesting. And I think it said Toys R Us. So right. or someone in the comments or some place, some forum or something said it was at Toys R Us in Japan. Yeah. So that's where I assume it was. Well, and here's the thing. Uh, for people that aren't familiar with the Skylander series, the Wii U came out in 2012 with Skylander's Giants, the sequel to yes. Spire's Adventure. So I believe this Spire's Adventure on Wii U came out in Japan in 2013. So this was after Giants. 
They just were yeah, like, so, hey, let's release Buyer's Adventure in Japan. Why not? So, so it's originally just a weird Skylanders, thing. The thing that's even weirder about this is that Skylanders uh, Spyro's Adventure originally released in 2011, right? Um, I think it was 2011, It was right? 2011, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, obviously, the next year, Wii U came out, and uh, Giants was a launch title, right? Um, and that release and everything. They just released this randomly. I don't know why they decided, oh, put it on Wii U and PS3. I don't know why they did, and apparently... But this is really weird. So it says Activision in the corner. But allegedly, this was like Square Enix has something to do with it in Japan. Yeah. Even though it doesn't say that on here. Publishing I don't know. in Japan is weird sometimes. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, it does. It does say Square Enix right here. <laughs> what a weird piece of Wii U collecting. Um, it says Square Enix right there. Yeah. So that's really weird. I guess Square Enix distributed it or something in Japan. I don't know what what's going on there, but you know whatever. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we should move on from Skyland Spires Adventure. Thank you, Caleb, for showing us your Grail. This is that's that's my that's my current Wii U Grail. Book of Remnant Tales too. Nah, I don't even care about that. I want this Spires Adventure starter kit because that thing is super cool, and it is now. I, I, I still need to get superchargers, and I'm not going for all the variants. I'm just getting one of each right now, like I said earlier. Uh, but aside from superchargers, it is the only Spire, uh, Skylanders game I do not have on Wii U now. So. That's, I'm going to start looking even harder. Although, I, I don't think it's ever been sold on eBay. So, enough of that, though. Uh, what other niche games do we need to talk about, Caleb? I mean, so Axiom there Verge. is. Let's talk about Axiom Verge real quick. Okay, and so then, and then we'll get... bundle it with the limited run type of games, because there's a three yes. of them. And I do want to talk about those. So, uh, there's actually, there's four. Um, but, sorry. sorry. Before, before we get into that, because that's like a whole thing, um, there is one more game I want to mention that I want to touch on, and it is Japan exclusive. Okay. It is the Nintendo Cross Joy Sound Wii Karaoke U, right? I still need to get this, this game also. was exclusive. Yes. This game was exclusive to Japan. I think it's actually also really hard to find. <laughs> um, and there, there's a microphone bundle. This game, which is really weird, by the way, um, the disc itself, I'm pretty sure, doesn't have anything to do with the actual game. It's basically a demo disc. Interesting. Because it was an app on the eShop in Japan, correct? Yeah. It, you download the game. The disc, I think, just has the game data on it, obviously. But you have to pay a subscription service to access the songs in order to play the game uh, digitally. The disc has like 300 songs, or it's either 300 or 30 or something. I think it's like it's some number of songs, like a demo, basically. And you could play. Uh, the the rest of the songs it came with a code for like a month you can play the rest of the songs but the disc itself has like 100 songs or whatever 30 songs or something um, so the disc itself has some of the songs on there but the game itself was a subscription service basically. right so yeah that one I don't think I've, I think I think I've seen it on eBay um, I assume it was only sold as a microphone bundle I did see it one time um, I th I'm sure there, there was more since then but the one time I did see it, I bought it. It was from, like, Tennessee or something. <laughs> I don't know why. Thing. The thing that was so weird about it is this game never pops up on eBay. And then the one copy I did see for this Japanese exclusive game was in the United States and was only $40. Right. Just completely right. So I don't know what happened there. Like, how... <laughs> the guy obviously imported the game, but did he not know what it was? I don't understand, but, you know, whatever... <laughs> Yeah, I got it. So I'm not complaining. Nice. Uh, as I was saying, though, let's talk about those limited yes. run games. We'll talk about the one that's actually limited run, uh, being Axiom Verge. So there was this whole like lawsuit, I think, and like there was like a it bunch. Was of, there a was whole. a there was a bunch of crap that happened with Axiom Verge on Wii U with like publishing rights, and I don't fully that know the story. That is an interesting story. You can look it up. It's like something to do with uh, Badland Games. Yeah, it Didn't was like a whole money or something thing. I, rem I remember and when it was so, going on, I was just like, dude, what is, what's Dude, going it's so on? crazy because, okay, I'm, I'm just going to give it like a brief story here. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do the abridged version. Uh, basically, Badland Games released every other version of Axiom Verge. Um, the, the, the multiverse edition or whatever it's called. Um, and then they were going to release it on Wii U, but no retailer would carry it. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> uh, this, this was in like early 2018. Or something. I don't remember. Um, but anyway... Uh, it's probably early 2018. 
So they went to limited run games. They said yes. So limited run um, gave money up front to help create the um, like the physical versions of the game. <laughs> and then nothing happened for like a year. Yeah. Badland wasn't letting them release it despite them giving them money or something, correct? Yeah. So they had the rights to it. Yeah, they had the rights to the game, but they wouldn't give it to them or something. I don't remember what it was. It doesn't matter. You can look it up online. This this video isn't about that. Right. The point is, the game did eventually release by Limited Run in 2019. So very late. Yeah. There's like there's six thousand copies of it. Right. Which isn't actually that bad compared to the other limited run games we'll get into. Um, but yeah, Axiom Verge Multiverse Edition. This goes for like two fifty to three hundred right now. I've gotten I've gotten so close to getting a really good deal on it. I've seen a couple copies that randomly pop up for like 130, 150. They sell instantly. Um, so be vigilant. Maybe you'll be able to get a good deal. Um, actually, yeah. don't do that because I want to get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to. Yeah. Let's not do this video. I'm, 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 I'm telling too many people too many things. No. Um, the prices are going to go up. You can't post it. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm artificially inflating the prices with my 1,000 subscribers. No, yes. um, but yeah, Axiom Verge, obviously the only limited run game, one of the last Wii U games. Axiom Verge, I haven't played it, but I've heard it's a fantastic Metroidvania. Of course, still in the eShop if you want to get it there. Yeah, and but apparently then, the developer says um, the Wii version is the best version of the game because right. of the map, I guess. Right. Oh, oh that makes sense, actually, yeah. Um, and then there are three more, as you said. I forgot about one of them, which we'll go into that one so, right now. Shakedown Hawaii. There, so Shakedown Hawaii was the last Wii U game physically released ever um that was game it that or just dance i always forget no just dance came out in 2018 this game came out in 2020 oh um, oh wow okay <laughs> yes all the limited run games released after this oh, in okay. fact those are the only ones that released after just dance just dance was the last like like retail wide retail game for the and Wii U. for people for people. people that don't know we're talking about just dance 2019 which also goes for like 80 right now that was one it's of the, the most last. expensive just dance game on the yeah. Wii. yeah um but anyway Check down Hawaii, there are 6,000 copies, 3,000 of which are the special edition, which is identical to the normal version, except it has like this little sl slipcover case thing on it. With I didn't R. get that one. I'm stupid. <laughs> I think it, it um, must have been sold out when I bought it. Um, but So there you go. Yeah. 6,000 copies total, so have fun. Last Wii U game ever. It's not too expensive, no. surprisingly. It's under 100 right now. That will change. It's less than Axiom Verge, yes. Yeah, it is much, much, much less than Axiom Verge. Axiom Verge also offers more. It's like a special yeah. edition. Um, and then there are two European limited games, Caleb. I actually just got one of them yes. in the mail today. I'll pull it out here. Uh, this is what, Pixel Heart is the company, correct? Yes. They Pixel did... Heart is the one that released it. Right, so uh, uh, I have Shmup Collection here. They also did Finding Teddy 2 in Europe. When did these release, Caleb? They released, I believe they released in June of 2020. They originally supposed to release in like May or something, but got delayed. Doesn't matter. These games came out like a, a few months before um, Shakedown Hawaii. Um, they both have 3,000 copies each, and they're both only in Europe. So right. if you have a PAL Wii U or a modded Wii U, then you can play them. Right. Otherwise, you know, have fun. <laughs> they are very expensive. I would say these... Cur currently, right now, I think they're cheaper than Axiom Verge. More expensive than the Shakedown Hawaii. I think these will overtake Axiom Verge, however. Um, and the thing that's cool... There's less of them. Right, um, obviously. But the thing that's and cool about Europe, them is on, so yeah, on the back, they actually point. have like what number they No, are. I love that. I was showing them off. I, I love that. I love the little diamond. It does look a little crooked. I don't know if you can really see that much thing, but the, the little box they made yeah. here, it's a little hard to see. Um, I love that. I love... It's like a little like diamond pattern. It makes it feel like a limited item. I just got this used. I paid, I believe, 120 for this, which I think right now is a pretty good deal. All the ones on eBay are like 180 to 200 um, I don't remember what they what price they released for. I think it was like thirty bucks each. I want to say. Right. Not I wish I'd done there. that. <laughs> Is it either thirty or forty, something like that? Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. And then obviously, yeah, like we said, Fighting Teddy. I don't know anything about Fighting Teddy, but similar price. I think it po weirdly pops up less than Shmup Collection from what I've seen so far. Um, which yeah. Makes no so sense. <laughs> objectively, I mean the 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 only way I can assume is um, Finding Teddy two. Um, so Finding Teddy 2 released on, I think it was on a bunch of platforms. It was it's on, on Switch, Wii U, Switch. I think, I think it's on Dreamcast. I think. That's weird. <laughs> um, or at least, or at least the first game is on Dreamcast. It's on PC and then something else, I think. Um, but anyway, Shmup Collection was also released on Switch. The Switch version has three games. The Wii version has two games. I don't know why that is, but it is. That is uh, Yes. They just didn't feel like doing um, it. They were like, "All right, we're we're not doing, we're not taking the time for this." I, I would assume the reason that 
Finding Teddy 2 shows up less often is because I think that game is more of like an action platformer and people probably like that game more. So that's fair. And basically if, it, if, it, here's the thing. It, if, it, so if it's on Dreamcast, then it's definitely like an actual game people like. <laughs> yeah. You don't, you don't pour something on the Dreamcast without a fan base already. Whereas Shmup Collection is, as far as I'm concerned, just a random Shmup game. I am sure there's a Shmup Collection fan. Um, they, they are like made by Japanese developers, I think, or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, what I don't know what, what else is there to talk about, Caleb. I think we've covered most of the major points, but I, um, did I miss any just, major ones? Um, there's just some some of the imports to look out for. Um, some of them don't appear that often. Other, I mean, like I said, most of the Japanese stuff and and basically every game, it, for the most part, appears online. There's just a few of them that don't. Um, but I talked about earlier, I teased this. I teased it in the post credit scene. Um the uh, there's like six versions of Dragon Quest X. Yeah, there is uh, Dragon Quest X version one, version two, version three. That is an all-in-one that includes one through three. Then there's version four. Then there's all-in-one that includes one through four. Right. So one through four, the all-in-one is easily the rarest, the most expensive one. That one came out in like 2018, I think. It doesn't even like really pop up that much, but I, th I think it pushes 200 yeah. from what I have seen. Yeah, and um, it has like a green banner and it says all in one. You can um, get versions. I already got. I got versions one through three last month. Uh, these are the cheap ones. I got all three for forty dollars, which I think is a pretty good deal. Um, typically, standard like by themselves, they go for like twenty five a piece, which also isn't that much. Um, but yeah, the all in one version of one through three and the all in one version of one through four and vor version four by itself are all the expensive ones. Those ones go for yeah. I don't even think. 60 plus at the oh, minimum for like thing, any other thing that's <laughs> worth noting about this game is before you buy and spend like $300 on all these, it's all please the same keep game. in mind that this is an online game. So I don't know if there's any content you can play offline. I don't think so. There is a way to get past it because I actually got a comment on the video. I showed those off where the guy said he plays it actively. <laughs> now, obviously you could have yeah. been BSing me, but yeah, I'm sure there's yeah. a way with it, like a proxy or something. Maybe not on Wii U specifically. Maybe on PC. I feel like it'd be easier. But this is a Japan online MMO, and it does track your like IP address and like will say like, "Hey, you're not in Japan. Get out of here." So, not to mention the fact that Wii U is regional lock, but that's beside the point. <laughs> right. Well, I think I think for the most people that's beside the point because most people have modded their Wii U. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um. Other random Japanese games. Uh, actually, I have it uh, here. I'm trying. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Eh, I'm gonna knock. I'm knocking over 3DS games. Uh, this popped up for like 50 <laughs> bucks, and I was like, "Oh, this is weird. I'm gonna get this." This is a Toys to Life Common Rider game. I think Caleb, you also bought this because after I bought it, because yeah. you're like, "Oh, that's cool." Um, so this is just a weird Japanese Wii U game, big box Wii U game. I, I knew this game existed. I just didn't know that it had like a big box version. Right, because there is two Common Rider games. There's this one, which is Toys of Life, and then there's Common Rider. Bat Battle Ride 2 or something like that, which is like a more gritty game. This is obviously like a fun little Toys of Life game. I still need to try this out, but uh, it's 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 still cool just to have like a Japanese Wii U game in the collection, which, and yeah. it, I don't know, it doesn't pop up too much, but also we both got it pretty easily, so maybe that's just my own speculation. Maybe it'll go down. Um, who knows? It, it's just a cool game yeah. to have and look out for if you see it. There's just a lot of rant. Like, I think there's like a, there's a Fist of the North Star game. Uh, Yokai yeah. or Yokai Watch. Uh, what well, Yokai Watch? Just Dance. There's that one, and there's also a big there's one. There's two for exclusive. That. There, there's two Japanese uh, Just Dance games. By right. the way, Just Dance Wii U version, um, which obviously is exclusive to Japan. These both are, and then there's also the Yokai Watch Dance version. Right. And then when I was before when I was trying to say, and then I accidentally said Yokai Watch because I was looking at my my beautiful copy of Yokai Watch Three, uh, Yakuza One and Two, a game I dude I wish I wish these has gotten localized. That would have been so cool. Um, so yeah, Yakuza One and this Two game, HD. It's also on PS3, I think. Yes, and not to be confused with Yakuza Kiwami, which was like the remake. This is just the PS2 games ported in HD, so yeah, kind this, of unique this, in this general. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, that one I, I think is probably going to be more sought after just because it's Yakuza. But again, I'm pretty sure it's Japanese only, so you probably won't be able to play it. If yeah. you're watching this video, you probably speak English mostly. So. Yeah, but still cool. Uh, and then two more games that I just thought of because I remembered because I can see them in Kayla's background, uh, and not even just two. I think there's <laughs> multiple. Are the Taiko no Tatsujin games? There's three of them in total. Three so is that total for big box games? Because I feel like when I look up Japanese Wii U games, I feel like there's like a million different Taiko games, and I'm just like, dude, what am I even looking at? So it's three on Wii U. Okay. 
You want to give a little history to explain those so, boxes? <laughs> I mean, I don't know much about them, to be honest. They are rhythm games. <laughs> not, yeah, the rhythm games. Um, some of them released in America, not on Wii U, but it, the series has released in America. Yeah, there's a lot of them on Switch now in America. Yeah. Um, they all have big box versions become, because they come with like a little drum thing. That's sort of like the Donkey Kong bongos. Yeah, of but course. It's, it's like one thing. Um, but yeah, so they all have big box versions. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly the names. It's like Taiko, Notatsujin, Tokumori, or Who something. knows, dude? <laughs> but there's, there's three of them just to, to look out for. Yeah. Um, I don't have the list on me, but there is a good Wii U list that has like every single game and I think most of the variants. Um, uh, what was his name? I, I forgot what it was. Finn Gamer. Shout yeah, out! Yeah, has, I've been watching. His I, I, I always, I always go back. He, he does not have Spyro's Adventure Wii U in the That's big true. box, and he does collect um, variants. But maybe, maybe, maybe by now he does. I think his last video was like in 2016 or something. So, so his his full collection, his full Wii U collection video. Um, just look up Finn Gamer Wii U collection, whatever. It's probably gonna be the first thing that pops up. His full collection video, whatever the newest one is, it has a, a list. Has a, in the description, there's a link for a, a Google Doc. It lists every single Wii U game if, and, like, every variant. If I can find it, so. I will put that in the description of this video and, of course, credit him. Um, so, ease of access. Or, you know you know what? Maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't. Go give Finn Gamer some love. He has some very good Wii U videos. We'll see what I do. How I'm feeling after yeah. this. Um, we'll see in the future. What, what we'll see future in the future. Does. Yeah, exactly. Um, some more... Now that I'm thinking, there's a lot of cool Japanese Wii U games. Uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris came out on Wii U in Japan. Well, a lot is a stretch, but, well, you know <laughs> more More than you would think considering yes. the circumstances. <laughs> Puyo Puyo Tetris did release on the Wii U in Japan. Yeah. Are there any other major ones? I feel like I'm missing like some weird anime game. Oh, uh, One Piece. <laughs> One Piece. Oh, oh yeah. Weird, uh, weird anime game, One Piece. So this actually released in Japan and Europe. I think it's it's a limited world ride, right? Um, yes. There is an English version. So you can play the game. Oh, Obviously, yeah. it's on other consoles. It's on PS4 in America, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so is. if you want to play the game, you can get that version. But if you want to collect it and not look at it, that's the yeah. key difference. I actually do yeah. want to play through. I have I somehow in my One Piece obsession, I've still never actually played a One Piece game. So I will. That's good. Now be played Pirate Warriors I was gonna three. say that. I, yeah. I was gonna say that's good. Those don't count. Warriors <laughs> games do not count. Um, are there any Warriors games exclusive to Japan? I feel like there has to be. Not on like, Wii U. I, it's I just Hyrule like Warriors. I feel that's like it. there has to be like one random one. Um, other things I can think of. There's the Monster Hunter Frontier, which is also an online game. Yeah, there's like there's like eight versions of that. Yeah, there's a ton of versions it's of like, that. Monster Hunter Frontier G versions one through eight. And yeah. There's like the anniversary edition or whatever. Yeah. So <laughs> basically, point yeah. being, do your due diligence, do your research. There's a ton of Wii U games in Japan. Like Caleb said, no, you're not a ton, but a lot more than you expect. So. Do your research, find more. I think we covered most of the major ones. I don't think we forgot anything too crazy here. Um, Caleb, any anything else before we close this off here? Um, there is one more thing that you should keep in mind. So obviously the Wii U hardware, there's like two versions. Um, there's the white version, which has 8 gigabytes. And then there's the black version, that's 32. The gamepad, which I have right here. Um, so there was white and black, and then there was the Wii U version, which came with the Wind Waker bundle. There's the Wii, the, the Wii U version. <laughs> yes, the, did I say the, that? Yeah, you said this is the Wii U version. <laughs> this is this is the Wii U version of the gamepad. Yeah, Wind Waker. Uh, Inception. Yeah. Um, but has the Wind Waker designs. Uh, by the way, um, I don't remember who it was, but I watched an unboxing once, and they said the that the Wii U console has. Is different. It's not. It's that's identical, that's identical to the black regular black version. It's just the gamepad that's different. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, also, um, there was 32 gigabyte. By the way, the only storages were eight. Were eight and 32. There was a 32 gigabyte white Wii U in Japan. Multiple of them, I think. Obviously, there's a bunch of different console bundles, but um, in America, the white one was only eight gigabytes. I'll get to that. Um, the black version was only 32. In Japan, there was um, 8 gigabyte white, I think, and 32 gigabyte white, and then there was 32 gigabyte black. I don't know about what they did in Europe, but there does technically exist a white 32 gigabyte Wii U in America. And not this many people know about this. Right here. I didn't know about this until he told me. This is the odd fact. <laughs> Back in the Wii U days, 
Oh yeah, I guess it's like they do this, but it was really special in the Wii U days. Uh, on Nintendo's website, they sold refurbished consoles and refurbished games. Those ones are really uncommon. They're not worth anything, but they're really uncommon, and they might go up eventually. Dude, the okay. refurbished games have a message that says yes. refurbished product. I, I, should I have bought this? I saw a copy of 3D World for like fifteen dollars. I said that, and I was like, "Yeah, they're not worth anything weird. right now." There are. I don't remember exactly what the full list was, but there was only like eight games or something. It wasn't very many, but they were all first party games. Um, I'm pretty sure that had it said refurbished product right in the front, like literally just like a red thing that says right here. It's on the cover. On right. the box art, yes, not like on the plastic. It's on the paper. It's on the paper. Yes. Um, the Wii U did get a box. They used to do custom boxes for refurbished products. That says refurbished product on the, on the front of the box. Via that, in the Nintendo store, they had a 32 gigabyte white Wii U available in North America. Now, that console is highly uncommon and basically never shows up ever. But if you can find it, you can sell it for whatever you want because it never shows up. Exactly. <laughs> and there will be some crazy collector that would buy that for a thousand. Yes. Probably plus. And it looks identical. Yes. So the only way you're gonna know that it's a thirty two gigabyte version is if it's sealed in the box. Or if well, you just if you, if you just check every white Wii U on the planet. <laughs> yes, if you just if you if you'd have to boot up the console and see what the storage size is. That's yeah. the only way you're gonna know. Yeah. So buy every single white Wii U ever on eBay and hope you find thirty two gigabyte. <laughs> yeah. And then one thing I want to add to this, since we're talking about the console right now, well, obviously, like you said, there's a bunch of different bundles. We don't really collect bundles. It's like the Mario Maker one with the Amiibo. Uh, we're not really going to yeah. get into that. Uh, one little tip I would say, if, and this is something I need to follow up on because I don't want, I haven't done this yet. Uh, if you are a Wii U fan, it, maybe even just beyond being a collector, if you actually like playing the games on the Wii U, uh, get a second gamepad now. <laughs> yes. Uh, gamepads are going to go up in price so much because they are going to break. It is a device with a screen on it. These are going to break. They're going to become more rare. And yeah, Wii U gamepads, not the console. You can just buy the gamepad. The gamepad, here's the thing. The gamepad is worth more than the console. So keep an eye out. If you ever see a good deal for just like a singular gamepad, I would say like 50 or lower, probably do that. <laughs> That's probably a pretty good price yeah. for that. Because these things are going to start breaking. I personally, I don't know. I kind of, I want, I have a black regular Wii U. I kind of want to get the Zelda one. But on the other hand, I almost want a white one just because like, I don't know. Mm. They discontinued the white one pretty fast because nobody bought it. Yes. Yes. Very, very quickly. I, well, there's like a weird... Dude, there was this weird... I don't know if it was in North America. I think it was. There was a bundle for Zombie U that came with a Pro Controller. That in was North in America. America. Yeah, that was weird. That one's weird. It, it, it was the only was bundle the normal, with a Pro Controller, was, I think. It was the black... Yeah. It was a black Wii U uh, console. 32 gigabytes. It came with Zombie U. I don't know if it came with Nintendo Land, but most bundles did. I, I prob probably did. It probably did. But it also came with the Pro Controller, which is really weird. Another thing you should also probably buy now. Well, it's still yes. There, also, there was also a Mario Kart 8 bundle that came with like a, a Wii wheel, a red one. So that exists. There's also, FYI. while we're here, because I just remember, there's the Mario Kart 8 uh, version that Nintendo New York had. That one yeah. doesn't buy. I was like, well, and the Hyrule Warriors. Warriors. Oh, yeah, Hyrule Warriors. So those ones pop up for like thousands when they pop up. So dang, good luck yeah. with that. They were only available in the center of New York. Good luck. And then also <laughs> something that I I didn't really know realize until kind of recently. Um, during this era of Nintendo, well, for one, they were partnered with, I think it was PDP or Hori. I forget which company it was. And they released these GameCube controllers themed after the characters. And then Nintendo itself also released themed uh, Wiimotes after the characters. These have gone up in price so much. I had no idea. Like the Toad Wiimotes, like over $100. So if you ever see those, uh, if, you, if you care about like collecting accessories and consoles themselves, which is kind of what we're doing in this section of the video, um, look out for those because those randomly are super expensive. I had, had no idea until recently. <laughs> you know what really annoys me about those though? Hmm. And not, not just those specific car character versions, but just like the regular Wiimotes they released. The, on the box, it says Wii U. But the controller just still just says Wii. Did I? It. I wish they had changed it to Wii U, make it more more personalized. That would have been cool, but they never did that. So whatever. <laughs> God, we're nerds. <laughs> that would have been cool <laughs> yeah. if they put a U on the controller. Caleb, I think we need to take a step back. I think we need to head out here. Any final yes. closing thoughts and uh, do your little signature where you can find you and everything here. Uh, yeah. So basically, more of the story is buy Wii U now, and I would say go for. Uh, the rarer games, if you can find them first. Um, 
because you, you'll be able to find uh, Lego City undercover any day of the week, right? But if you find a copy of Spire's Adventure, probably buy it because <laughs> who knows when you're going to see it again. Right. And I guess maybe I should have said this at the top. Bro, I am I am 21 years old. I am not a legal consultant. I am not a financial advisor. <laughs> maybe yes. I, everything we said could end up being complete BS. The world might end and then none of this is worth anything. So we're, uh, here's the thing. Obviously, yes, it is very nice knowing I have valuable things on the shelf here. Do I actually care? Am I going to sell them? Am I booing this in, in hopes of like selling it eventually? No, I just fucking grew up with the Wii U and I like the Wii U. I think a lot of people are getting the wrong idea. Like, dude, you're doing this so you can inflate the prices and, and sell them again. Dude, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. This is for me. This is for me to own and look at because I like the Wii U. This is not an investment. No. <laughs> if you are watching this as like, oh, I want to invest and sell this later. I want to, yeah. No, I no. mean, hey, if you want to do that, sure, take your own risk. But I think this, uh, the videos I've been making look, for 3DS and we we are consumers. We are fans of Nintendo. Yes. We are doing this to look, keep. <laughs> if, if your main method of income is buying Wii U games online and then flipping them, you're probably not going to make that much money. <laughs> yes. Now, you might like, make a little bit of money. If you if you find yeah, a, you know, a Twilight Prince for $10, then yeah, buy Twilight Prince for $10, sell that shit. Absolutely. I've done that because <laughs> I found yes. it for super cheap. So, like, no no shame in it. I don't shame people for doing that. Make mm -hmm. your bread. I just don't yeah. think it's, you know, maybe not maybe not what you should be doing. There are better ways to make money. <laughs> yes. But uh, with that said, Caleb, where can people follow you online? I am on Twitter at Caleb underscore Bravo 99. I don't have a channel or anything, so that's basically it. This is his. But I do appear. I do appear on this channel from time to time. Yes. So there. You go. Whenever there's a Wii U business to attend to, and of course, yes. thank you for all. Thank you all for uh, listening to the seminar on Wii U games. <laughs> uh, take, take, tying it back in. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Botox Media. Subscribe here for more Wii U 3DS and general Nintendo content. Uh, I've been posting every day. The support has been insane recently. I'm recording this a little in advance, so. Right now, when I'm recording this, we're at 1,100. Hopefully, by the time I post this, you might be 13, 14. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. Um, it is funny, Caleb. Not to go on a little tangent here. Uh, I recorded the top 10 Wii U games video, and I haven't even posted that yet when, I'm, when we were recording this. <laughs> In that video, I say, we're approaching 1,000 subs, guys. <laughs> we're already smashed back. Yeah. That, <laughs> we're already yeah, smashed back. Uh, so not, not to date this, but it is. Yeah, so yeah. The, hopefully, hopefully, this is super dated, and we're way past 1,300. Um, but yeah, of course, follow me everywhere. Subscribe for more content like this. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. See you.